Cold forming or cold heading screw manufacturing starts off with raw material in the form of wire. The raw material, or wire, is sourced either internationally or domestically depending on the final application and then shipped to the manufacturing facility. Cold heading fastener manufacturing facilities contain a number of machines capable of producing a range of different diameters and lengths as well as different material types. These machines can process thousands of fasteners per hour. The operators running these machines typically have been doing so for a number of years and are often likened to artists as it takes a high level of skill to set up and tweak the machines throughout the process in order to produce a consistent quality end product that meets the dimensional requirements. Here you see the phases that the blank or slug goes through during a cold heading process. This is considered a multi-blow, multi-die operation, as there are multiple blows or strikes and multiple dies used to create the final product. A single die machine has one die, but two punches are used to form the screw. This is commonly referred to as one die, two blow. In either situation, the process is virtually the same. The blank starts off being placed in front of a die, which is basically a mold with a cavity that has the shape of the screw carved out of it. The punch then delivers a blow, forcing the blank into the die. This intense pressure causes the blank to take the shape of the screw inside the die, much like playing with Play-Doh as a kid. Another blow is applied to the material left above the die, forming the head of the screw. In the multi-blow process, everything is the same, except multiple punches progressively form the head and drive type. Let's take a look at the actual cold heading process. The wire sits on a turntable, which rotates as the wire is fed into the machine through the draw box. The torque hub, or capstan, pulls the wire through the draw box, which helps straighten the wire as well as slightly reduce the wire diameter. This provides multiple advantages, from meeting tight diameter tolerances on the final product to utilizing the same wire for multiple diameters. In this case, with copper-coated stainless steel, the wire is fed through a heating element, which adds heat to the wire, allowing for more malleability. This isn't necessary for all material types. The feed rolls apply pressure to the wire, drawing it into the cold forming part of the machine. The quill stabilizes the wire as it is fed into the machine, while a cutter cuts a specific portion of the wire to be used to form the screw. This is done precisely in order to prevent any scrap. Let's see it in slow motion to really get a good look at what's going on. As you can see towards the top, the wire is coming through the quill and the cutter is cutting the amount needed and transferring it in front of the die. The punch then comes in and delivers a blow to the blank, forcing it into the die. The punch then rotates and delivers the final blow, forming the head. This is considered a single blow machine because it delivers only two punches. Once the final blow is delivered, a knockout pin ejects the screw and the process is repeated. The ejected screw then falls onto a belt, which is ultimately deposited into a bin which will be transported to the threading area. As you can see, a good amount of heat is generated from the cold forming process. Multi-blow parts are more intricate and difficult to form, which require multiple punches in order to create the final product. This is a multi-blow cold heading machine in slow motion. Just like single blow, you will see at the top the wire being fed into the machine and the cutter cutting a specific amount of wire to be positioned in front of the die. The difference here is there are multiple dies and multiple punches being used to form the final product. You'll see the screw being transferred from die to die until finally being ejected by the knockout pin. Now let's see this in real time.
In the same manner as a single blow, the screw falls onto a conveyor belt, is transported to a bin, and then brought over for threading. The next step is thread rolling. We start with thread rolling dies, which have been manufactured to exact specifications based on the thread pitch required for the fastener being threaded. This process, just like the heading process, does not produce any scrap. In this demonstration, you'll see how the thread rolling dies work. One of the thread rolling dies remains stationary while the other moves. An unthreaded screw is put in position and squeezed between the two dies, forming the threads. Here you will see a threading machine in action. The unthreaded screw is positioned between the stationary and movable dies. The movable die then forces the screw between the two, forming the threads as the screw travels down the dies, finally spitting out on the other end. Let's see that in real time. Here is another thread rolling machine in real time. As you can see, this one is much faster. The rate is dependent on material, physical dimensions of the part, and many other variables. It's easy to see how factories can manufacture thousands of screws per hour. Just like the heading machines, once the process is finished, the screws are then collected in a bin. They will then be cleaned, plated, and or have any additional processes completed before shipping to the customer.